everyone this is all in the day and uh, today we will discuss the compression member in steel structures in this picture we can see this members are uh, basically compression members what is compression members any structural member which is subjected to two equal and opposite compressive force that means if it is pushed from both the sides both the ends it is compression member some examples we can see this is the uh, circular hollow column and this is the i section column stanchion it is basically the built up columns like this one post basically wooden columns used in this picture you can see are generally used in old buildings as well mm. <coughs> some member of truss like principal rafter this one is the principal rafter this is always a compression member strut it is also a part of a truss this member is called strut this one is also strut so the strut is always a compression member in a truss boom boom is basically the principal compression member like this one is boom and this one is boom uh, in in this type of cranes all the loads whatever it is carrying uh, to carry to lift the material from the ground level to the top the load comes to this member that's why it is called the compression member boom uh, in any type of truss member if the load is applied in the downward direction all these top members are compression members the bottom members are tension members and diagonal members sometimes subjected to compression sometimes tension depends on the analysis a compression member basically uh, column it is divided in two parts short column and long column long column generally fails in buckling whereas short column generally fails in crushing that is the main difference compression member is much more critical than the tension member you can understand very easily if a member is pulled from both the sides then it is automatically straightened out by itself under loading but if it is pushed from both the sides then here is a tendency to buckle for each and every member uh, as the load will increase the buckling tendency will increase that's why it is much more critical uh, comparing to the tension member some uh, some terms we have to know before going to the design part that is the effective length effective length is basically k into l so what is effective length it is basically the distance between the zero bending moment points uh, we'll see some examples uh, before that l is the unsupported length and k is the constant which depends upon the end conditions of the member and it is given in table number 11 let us see another example it is both end fixed then zero moment you will get here and here so this distance is 0 0.65 into the whole length so this is the effective length of a member of a column which is a fixed end at both the sides for simply supported here you will get zero moment here you will get zero moment that's why the effective length is point a 1.0 into l uh, it is given in table number 11 table number 11 you can see um, different type of uh, end conditions are given in this uh, table different type of end conditions are given so depending on the end conditions uh, the values of effective lengths are given in the right hand column so here two part is there one is translation one another one is rotation so for this end it is fixed that means in translation it is restrained translation means whether it can move in horizontal direction or not and rotation rotation means whether it can rotate about about its own axis or not so both cases it is restrained that means it is a fixed end so when it is free end then in both cases it is free so you can find some mistakes are there in this table like this too as it is the hinged it will not be free in translation it will be restrained in translation and free in rotation this thing will be changed only rest of the thing you can easily understand by looking at the structures along with its uh, effective length you can find it easily the next thing is the slenderness ratio it is basically uh, the effective length divided by effective length divided by the radius of gyration the radius of gyration for any section you can find it from sp61 
otherwise r is equal to root over moment of inertia by area so what is slenderness ratio slenderness ratio is the measurement uh, measurement of tendency of a member to buckle okay so longer the compression member greater the tendency to buckle so you will get the maximum value of lambda if you put the minimum value of radius of gyration the next thing is euler's formula euler's formula uh, is made by considering this factors given here what is euler's buckling formula this formula is pcr so what is pcr pcr is the such amount of load above which the structure the member will start to buckle so if you divide this formula uh, pcr divided by uh, area then you can easily find out the buckling stress that denotes with fcc so this is the formula of buckling stress okay so if you divide it with a so i by a it is r square we know that's why r square came and this le is nothing but the effective length kl okay so the next thing is effect design compressive strength very very important formula in most of the cases we have to ultimately find out the design compressive strength the formula is pd is equal to ae into fcd and that pd must be greater than p p is the applied load and pd is the design compressive stress a is the sectional area which you will get from sp61 and this fcd is design compressive strength so the stress there are four ways to find out fcd let us see the v1 uh, it is given in clause number 7.1.2.1 fcd is this one so in this formula two things are new one is phi and another one is lambda the value of phi is given in the same clause you can see this one and uh, again here it is lambda so the value of lambda is the effective slenderness ratio this is not only slenderness ratio this is effective slenderness ratio it is equal to fi by fcc fcc means you can remember that euler's buckling stress so if you put you will get this term so first find out lambda then put it here and uh, put it here also so alpha is new alpha is the imperfection factor you will get it from table number 7 alpha value depends upon the buckling class a b c d a b c d are the buckling classes so this buckling classes you will get to know from table number 10 let us see in table number 10 table number 10 this is one part of the table number 10 so here each and every sections are divided in two axes this is y y axis vertical one and horizontal is z z axis so depending on some criteria like you have to check h by bf and you have to check tf so uh, according to this criteria you have to find out which buckling class your section belongs to so this buckling class depends uh, uh, depends upon the axis for zz the buckling class is different for yy maybe the buckling class is different sometimes may be same in here both cases these are same so this various type of sections you will get roll die section welded sections hollow sections welded box and so on so first find out buckling class then check the value of alpha for the buckling class then put it here uh, put the value of lambda here here and here and put the value of phi here you will get to know the fcd the next thing is way number two fcd is chi into fy by gamma m0 uh, same clause number one and only unknown thing is chi the chi depends upon kl by r fy and the buckling class from table 10 in the similar method you have to find out the buckling class for two axes so for particular buckling class to get the value of chi you have to go to this four tables if the buckling class is b go to table 8b if the buckling class is a go to table 8a and uh, let us see one example this is table 8a the in table 8a this is for stress reduction factor chi this row is fy in generally a p 410 fy is 250 and this is column of kl by r suppose kl by r value is 70 and for this one 0.803 is the value of chi if the value of kl by r is in between these two then you have to interpolate between these two values to find out the exact value of chi okay in this way five find out the value of chi put it here you will get to know the fcd way number three again you have to find out the buckling class in the similar way and effective slenderness ratio 
and from these two values you will get to know the FCD from graph 8. It is given from graph 8, uh, you can see in graph 8 here uh, the um, y axis FCD by FY and x axis that effective slenderness ratio this formula. If this find out lambda this one, if this is 1.5 and buckling class is C then it cuts here and for this corresponding value in y axis is 0 0.3 that means FCD by FY is 0 0.3 you know the value of FY find out FCD ok. This is a simple way and way number 4 this is also very simple find out buckling class, yield stress and slenderness ratio and go to table 9A, B, C or D depending on the buckling class. If buckling class is A then go to table 9A. So let us see one example in table 9A it is for FCD design compressive stress. Again this row is FY and this row is KL by R. If the KL by R value is 70 and it is um, 250 then you will get the value of FCD like 182. If it is the KL by R value is in between any two, then you have to interpolate uh, among these values. Okay. Now we will go for uh, the single angle section. This is a special case. Only for single angle section, this there will be some changes in the main formula. The main formula is same, which is given in 7.1.2. Come to the next formula FCD. So, in this single angle case only, the change will be this lambda will be replaced with lambda E, which is given in clause number 7121. Mind it, this is only for single angle case. So, what is lambda E? So, lambda E will be this one. Here, new terms are there, lambda VV and lambda phi. This formula is given in clause number 7512. So, to find out lambda VV, lambda phi, you have to see these values are given in the same clause number few new terms are there like L like RVV L is the center to center length RVV is the radius of gyration here B1 and B2 B1 and B2 the width of two legs of the angle T is the thickness of the angle in this way RVV radius of gyration you can find out from HP61 here epsilon is there epsilon means you know root over of 250 by FY so in this way find out this one and this one put it here and the new terms are k1 k2 and k3 let us see this k1 k2 and k3 is op are obtained from table number 12 in table number 12 uh, k1 k2 k3 values are given mind it it depends on the number of bolts and the end connections number of volt if it is 1 then go for this 2 number of volt is 2 and greater than 2 then go for this 2 line and here the end connections are given whether it is fixed or hinged. Similarly, here it is also given fixed or hinged. So, in this way you can easily find out K1, K2, K3 and uh, lambda VV, lambda phi. All the, put all the values here, you will get lambda E. Put lambda E here, you will get FCD. Check with this one and put the FCD value here, you will get the uh, compressive strength of the single angle member. Mind it, all these formulas are only for single angle sections. Okay, for double angle sections, the the previous formulas will be uh, considered. But uh, in case of double angle, whether it is uh, in the opposite side of the gusset plate or in the same side of the gusset plate, uh, the effective length will will you have to take. 0.85 into L. The K value is 0.85 according to clause number 7521. See you in the next video with illustrative example. Thank you.